single shot, high sequential, low sequential, pro capture, higher shot, self timer, custom self timer can all be reached from the same place. Anna will tell you what those are and how to use them. Hi there, my name is Peter Forsgaard, an Olympus visionary and a professional photographer from Helsinki, Finland. And before we get into the business, please consider subscribing to my channel and hit the bell so you get notified when there is a new video online. My channel is all about you getting to be a better photographer and of course about Olympus gear. The easiest way to get to these settings that I mentioned in the beginning is to press the OK button and access them from the control panel. Or you can also use a dedicated button that some of the Olympus cameras have on the left side of the camera body. But let's start with the first and the most commonly used option, a single shot. This is the one that we most likely use the most. It's very simple, you just press the shutter button and voila, the image is taken. And it takes, it takes only one image. But what if we need to have a sequence of images? Then we have two options. We got the high sequential and low sequential. And the amount of images that a camera can capture in a second depends on your Olympus body. Pro bodies can go all the way up to 60 frames per second and the EM10, the enthusiast and, and entry level are a bit lower. But what it actually means is when you press the shutter button all the way down uh, to take images, it will take a sequence of images. And why this is uh, something that you might need. You might have a fast moving subject and you want to have really, really a lot of images of that. Or you have somebody uh, doing something or a bird is flying and it's uh, sometimes really hard to press the button exactly on the, at the right time. So making a sequential of images, you might get that shot that you need. But of course, if you are really experienced and really fast ref reflexes, that, yeah, if you have really fast reflexes, then you can use single uh, shot mode also with fast moving subject. But that's some skill that you need. And that comes from experience. I very seldom use the high sequential, but not because I, I have really fast reflexes. It's something that I don't need that much because I don't really shoot fast moving object that often. But if I do a bird photography every now and then, then in most cases, I will use it. And it has actually two different uh, settings. You can have the mechanical shutter. And if you want really fast up to that 60 frames per second with EM1 Mark II and Mark III and EM1X, then you need to have the electronic shutter, which is a lot faster. And you can set the speed that you want from the special menu C1. And one thing that I did not mention in the beginning of this video is that if there's some of these settings or features that I'm uh, talking about missing, then you need to go to the special menu D1 and turn them on. This is also a good place if you uh, don't need all of these, then you can just leave it off and then it won't show when you go to the super, super control panel and it's easier to and faster to access those uh, features that you need. So that's a, that's a good tip to, to do. If you don't really need self timers, then just turn it off. Then all of, all of these uh, two different uh, features or settings have also a uh, option for anti-shock and silent shutter. And there is a, a dedicated video about that and you can watch it from there. I will put a link into the description of this video and also there will be a end screen to that video where I talk about and go through what the silent shutter and the anti-shock shutter actually means. Then some of the Olympus cameras have pro capture and those cameras are EM5 Mark III EM1 Mark II, EM1 Mark III, and EM1X. And what Pro Capture is, is that when you press the shutter button halfway, it starts buffering images into the memory of the camera. And when you press the shutter button all the way down, it will store those images that were pre-captured before you actually took the first image. And this is a very good feature if you have a situation like this, when you need to uh, capture a perfect moment of a bird starting to flight or landing and here are some other images that I've made with Pro Capture.
And all of these images would not have been possible for me without Pro Capture. Of course, some of you might be more experienced with bird photography and have better re reflexes than I do. You could have done that with a single shot, but not, not me. I, I could not have done those. So Pro Capture is a really good feature for images like that. And you can tweak the amount of image that it will buffer when pressing the shutter button. And you can also put a upper limit all the way up to 99 shots so that you won't fill your memory card with one burst of images. But you can also turn it off if you, if you need to take a really, really big amount or large amount of images. And then also the uh, speed uh, differs. If you have the Pro Capture High, you can go all the way up to 60 frames per second. And if I remember correctly, you can go all the way up to 15 images with, with Pro Capture Low. And also with Pro Capture Low, you will have autofocus working. If you have a CAF or CAF tracking on, it will uh, track the object or the, the bird that's moving. But if you have the uh, Pro Capture High Sequential, then it will lock the focus and the exposure and the white balance on the first image when you press the, the shutter button halfway. So if the bird is coming towards you, it won't get it uh, won't be sharp if you don't have enough uh, depth of field. But if you have the low sequential pro capture, then it will track the flying bird that is coming towards you. So if you need autofocus, then use the pro capture low. And before we get into the last one, which is the high res shot, let's talk about the self timer. There are three different options. You have uh, the option to have two second self timer or 12 second self timer. And then you have the custom option where you can have uh, multiple images taken uh, with the self timer. So you can set the timer, you can set the amount of images, and then you can set the uh, interval between the images. And then you can set the autofocus if it will focus on every image or just the first one. And it will keep the focus same with all the other images. And this is a good way of taking selfies. You can have multiple expressions on your face and you can uh, move a bit and, and, and have a, a, a bit of a different selfie. And, and I don't really take selfies. Sometimes I use that when, when I uh, make a thumbnail for my videos, if I want to be myself on those, if I want to put my face on the thumbnail, then I will use that because then I can, you know, move a bit to make it a, a different uh, expressions on my face. And I might even smile which I don't usually do when I talk about uh, talk about cameras, which I don't really know why, because it, cameras are fun and these videos are fun to make, but I tend to be a bit serious. So I try to smile more. That That's something that people comment a lot, that I don't smile enough. Sorry about that. But, uh, you know, just me. We're serious people here in Finland. But of course, the self-timer is not only for taking selfies. It's also a very good way to avoid camera shake. You just set the two uh, second timer and press the shutter button and wait for two seconds and the image will be taken by the camera. And this is also, uh, of course, but of course this is not a good way if you have a moving subject because you don't really know when the actual image will be taken. But for, for uh, portraits, for, uh, you know, still life, it's, it's totally fine. And, and also landscapes when, when the exact time is not crucial. And sometimes the two second might be too short or the 12 second that I defaulted might be too long. Then you can use the, the custom self timer. Set the timer, for example, like five seconds and choose one image. Then you have a five second self timer, which might be a better than two seconds. And of course, if you need a longer than 12 seconds, then you can go all the way up to 30 seconds. Then the last option, high res shot. And this is not in every Olympus camera. You have this on EM5 Mark II, EM5 Mark III, EM1 Mark II, EM1 Mark III, and EM1X. So five cameras have it. And the EM1 Mark III and EM1X also have high res shot uh, handheld version. So the high res shot is actually a way of making bigger files. It can go all the way up to 80 megapixels with the, with the 20 megapixel sensor. And it's a bit lower with the uh, 60 megapixels. I think it was around 50 megapixels or 60, something like that. And there are two advantages. Of course, the files are bigger. You get more megapixels if that's something that you need. But then the third good thing is that it will record every pixel with three different colors. And that's a good thing. You will have a better image quality and better colors when you have every 
uh, plays uh, recorded with three different uh, colors, with the RGB colors. And with the newest Olympus cameras, EM1 Mark III and EM1X, you have the handheld high-res shot, and that can be uh, chosen from the uh, same menu. Just press the info button and choose the uh, hand icon, and you're good to go with the hand res, <laughs> hand res high, <laughs> the handheld high-res shot. I hope this video was helpful, and here is a video about the silent shutter and the anti-shock shutter. And also, if you need some consulting, press that and see what options I do have for you for one-to-one -one -one consulting. But hey, stay safe and thanks for watching and bye for now.